اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى في السر والعلانيه والمنشط والمكره لعلكم تفلحون يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد ان في خلق السماوات والارض واختلاف الليل والنهار لايات لاولي الالباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والارض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار all praises to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator sustainer and cherisher of the worlds may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to praise him to thank him and to be grateful to the blessings that he has bestowed on us and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire each and every one of us to begin our days by counting the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recognizing these blessings and trying to use them as best as we can in ways that would bring us closer to him and ultimately lead us to jannatul firdaus the paradise that allah has prepared for his righteous servants i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i invoke his mercy and blessings on his chosen servant the seal of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as all previous prophets may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor us to love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to love allah to love his messenger and to love those who love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to love those actions and words that man mannerisms that would bring us closer to the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma arzuqna hubbaka wa hubba rasulik wa hubba man yuhibbuk wal hubb alladhi yuqarribuna ila hubbik alhamdulillah allah has blessed me and you to witness summer which is a great opportunity for all of us to go out kul siru fil lan explore the earth the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the perfect time we were in winter and then some of springer came very hes- hesitatingly and then we are now in summer this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us and i need to reflect today on how we as muslims can utilize the blessings of summer for physical fitness for intellectual fitness mental fitness and spiritual fitness while having all the fun you can imagine within the bounds of halal and haram before i proceed i need to correct one misunderstanding among many muslims and religious people we fail to understand that islam is a balanced way islam came into a world where the great religious traditions had gone to two extremes one is they were permissive they were another is they were too restrictive this is permissiveness and this restrictiveness the tashdeed imam hasan al basri call characterized the way of islam he had in mind the various religious traditions and he said deenullah bayna al ghali wal jafi the religion of allah strikes the middle path shunning avoiding the extremes of right and left the extremes of right means you know legalism it can also mean extreme you know legality rigidity in religion so that nothing everything becomes haram and the extreme means some on the other side is they shun the law but they go into all kinds of extremism in venerating messengers setting up idols and statues in their minds they don't muslims don't do it 
by bringing statues into the masjid, but Muslims also fall into the category of reverencing even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Awliyaullah. As you, if you go travel in the Muslim world in India or Egypt or uh, uh, Morocco, you will see how we have turned our reverence and respect for the saints akin to worshipping them, just like the polities worship their saints and their gurus and pay homage to them. So Islam strikes a balance by trying to make us aware that we have rights to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to rights to our spouses, we have rights to our bodies, our bodies have rights, our soul has rights, our guests have rights, our eyes have rights, our mind has rights. Give each one his or her due. Laysa shadidu bi surah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a beautiful hadith talk about spoke about the power in Islam, and he said the real power, the real strength, is the strength of character. And of course, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Al mu'min al qawiyu khairun wa habu ilallah min al mu'min al laif." A strong believer is better and more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more beloved by Allah than a weak believer. The question should, we should ask, what is power, what is strength in Islam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when he said, inna li badadika alayka haqqa, your body has rights. What was he talking about? He was talking about maintaining our body as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the daily prophet, duas of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was, Allahumma matina bi asma'ina wa abusarina wa quwwatina ma hiyaytana. Ya Allah, help us enjoy in full measure all of our faculties, physical and internal, inward. Outward and inward, including our eyes, including our ears, hearing ears, and our thinking, all of our faculties intact. Let them be intact. Help us maintain them in in the optimal manner. Matina, let us enjoy the gift of hearing, the gift of sight, the gift of thinking. And one of the prayers of Rasulullah was, Wala taruddari ila ardari umr. Don't return me to an advanced age where I lose all awareness and consciousness. I don't recognize my son or grandson or wife or children. All of us need to pray because when you go to these nursing homes and you see the father cannot recognize the children. And the husband cannot recognize the wife. Wife cannot recognize the husband. I don't want to be returned. One of my daily prayers in Tarabi was, Ya Allah, don't return me and wife and my wife to this kind of advanced age where we lose consciousness. We lose our mind. So we need to be able to work on maintaining our body, our mind, and our soul. This is the balanced way of Islam. You know, when you go to India, to those cities where this extreme Hindu religious extremism is practiced, you will see people under, going through various, you know, methods of torturing the body. They think by torturing the body and abandoning yourself to that spiritual ecstasy, they call it, blissful state of communion with God Almighty, you free yourself from this bondage. This is called mocha. You're coming out of this physical cage to be liberated. And of course, Buddha also practiced something like that. And later on, 
he was, he came to the realization there is no mocha, no salvation unless you make a balance. But Islamic way is clear. It's so clear, some of those who studied Islam, comparative religion experts, after having studied the various paths of spirituality practiced by the various religious traditions, they came to Islam and they described it here. It is a murky water out there. Here it is a clear water. You can see the bottom of that river. So it's plain. Taraktukum al mahajjatil bayla. I have left you on a clear highway. And the characteristic of this clear highway is you need to establish a balance between the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Sharia it's called Hukukullah, the rights of Allah, the Creator, and Hukukul Ibad, the rights of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including fellow Muslims, your spouse, your parents, your neighbors, and your children and grandchildren, and your fellow Muslims, and also fellow human beings as well as the creatures, the animal world, the whole world around you, the neighbor, the environment. So we have duties. So we need to maintain this balance. And summer is the time. I have to report to you, I used to teach teenage boys in a class of 35. 35 students were there. And I would ask them, how many of you get time to spend with your parents? They came, they were rich kids. Husband is a doctor, wife is a doctor, mother is a doctor, father is a doctor, mother is a doctor. And some of them told me, we don't get to see our father or mother, except maybe a few minutes a week. So these children have been growing up without having the blessing of eating a dinner with their parents. No family dinner, no family outing. They don't know their father or mother. They did not interact with them. Summer is the time for us to change, have family dinners, make picnics. The Prophet ﷺ was a family man. He was so much, you know, devoted to his family that the companion who accompanied the Prophet 10 years said, I never saw a person more compassionate, more caring, more participating in the family duties like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So much so that they stand for prayer. Iqama is given. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, wait and he kept them waiting they came he came back said i forgot to put the lid on the cooking pot this is the messenger of allah this is the role model for me and you the lesson we learn from this is a muslim husband a muslim wife should build a family together caring sharing the duties and responsibilities and he should be able to do the family chores as the messenger of Allah was. So the summer is the time for the family to be together, to eat together, to discuss together. Shura should begin. You know, we talk about Shura in the Muslim government, but Shura begins at home. The decision, family decision should be made at home through consultation. So coming to summer, summer is the perfect time for the family bond members to that bonding, to strengthen that family bond. Take your children out. Don't let the man alone do it. How often you see the man is going by with his children <laughs> and the wife is at home and they are not seen together. Whereas the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa always traveled with his wife. Because he had more than one, he had to, you know, Qur'a, practice Qur'a and select. Based on not his whim, 
but Allah's inspiration, this is what Rasulullah used to do, Qur'a, lots. He put their names and draw the lot. And whoever name appears, he would pick her to go with him. So the lesson for me and you, of course I don't encourage having more than one wife here, it is impossible, impossible for a man to pay, to balance his, his work and his duty to even one wife and children. I know how hard it is. So don't come to me, you talk about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam having more than one, here I am, perform my marriage, I wouldn't do that. Okay, so family time. Another thing is, summer is the time for us to explore the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Quran is full of it. Today the greatest, biggest danger forced you know, destroying the mind, the physical body, and spirituality is devices. And we see people bringing the devices into the masjid. When the clear prohibition is there, you are to pay undivided attention to the khutbah. In the old country, the Muazzin stands up, O man laga fala jummatala. Whoever becomes heedless, do not pay attention to the khutbah, when the khutbah is delivered, his juma is invalidated. And yet many people come with devices and they are looking using the devices. Some of them may be recording it or taking notes. I would not encourage that. You are to pay undivided attention. So these devices are going to kill the analytical power because they stop the reading habit. Our children are not reading. If there is one thing that distinguishes Islamic civilization was, it was a civilization built on reading and writing, cultivation of civilization. Books, reading and writing, so much so that our great thinkers produced hundreds of works before they died. And the library is full of, go to Robert's library if you have to access and you will see, you know, store, shelves after shelves of books in fiqh, in sharia, in usul al-fiqh, you name it. And this is only one small percentage of what Muslims produce. So how we need to make our children aware of the intellectual heritage. How we do that? Of course, one of the main thing is we need to be able to develop their mind and going out and exploring the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touching that tree, hugging that tree, kissing that flower, and enjoying the beauty, and appreciating the cre wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed integral to the Quranic worldview. Brother, read the Quran, open your mind and eye. When you are reading the Quran, how many verses are talking about the nature as ayah? Everything out there is a sign of the wonder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you reflect deeply on it, it will reveal to you the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we do that? Today, we make our children bound to the rooms in front of the television or with the devices. Take them out. Let them climb that mountain. Let them sit on the mountain as the Prophet used to sit. Have you been to Uhud? Rasulullah used to sit on the mountain of Uhud. Have you been to Makkah, Warhira? The Prophet of Allah used to climb there. Today it is impossible for me, next to impossible for me to climb that mountain. So where is this Sunnah of the Prophet so develop your mind, have sports activities, this kind of camps where Islamic Institute and Foundation and others organizing encourage your children to participate in them. And these camps should emphasize not just physical activity or intellectual activity, but also spiritual. They should be taught training, given training in how to perform salah, how to perform tahara, I am afraid many of our children don't know how to purify themselves after going to washroom 
and the sign is there when you go to the washroom. And the responsibility falls not only on the shoulders of the teachers, but on the parents. Use the time. You know, take time off from your work. If you have one month, focus. Let this be a golden opportunity for you because, you know, time should not be wasted. If you waste the time, this is the only capital we have to get to Jannah. Abdullah Abdullah Masood used to say, if a day goes by and my lifespan is curtailed, reduced by one day, and the day went by without me able to do something good, achieving something good for myself, preparing for my place in Jannah, I regret more than my regret for anything. But today, we are so much busy. Everyone is out to surpass. This man has a $1 million house. He goes there, and you want to buy a $2 million house. This man has a Honda car, and you want to surpass him, buy a Mercedes or BMW. Somebody is asking me, Imam Kuti, why don't you get a Mercedes? Naudu Billah. Brother, I don't need a Mercedes. The car I have is forced upon me by my son. I would be better off with a, a used car where I used to pay only $100 insurance, uh, $50 insurance. But when you get this kind of a car, you end up paying so much for it. For what? So no wastage. People ask me the question, Sheikh Kuti, you have been wearing the same jacket. This is the used jacket of my son, brother. This is not my jacket. Because when my son is discarding it, I tell him, don't discard it. I want to use it. Why? Because we talk about the life of Fatima. I am not perfect. We talk about the life of Aisha Allahuna. And yet Muslims are competing like the kuffar in, you know, exchanging new and new and new and then dump it. This is not the lifestyle of a Muslim who knows that he will stand before the Lord of the worlds. When millions in the world are starving, they need to walk 100 miles sometimes to get a morsel of food and you eat and eat and eat and you walk 100 miles to cut down that weight. To trim down or slim down. You need to go how can we call ourselves Muslims? You may say, I'm giving zakah, I am giving sadaqah, but this would not justify this kind of indulgence and wasteful habits, and then, you know, living in mansions, and you should know that you are going to go to that hole, no cushion, no pillow, and your body is eaten by worms. That will be my stage and your stage, so, Distract, don't be distracted by this. Balance. Make use of your time given to us by doing something good. And summer can be used, brothers and sisters, to organize open houses in our Islamic centers. Islamophobia can only be met by creative ways of introducing Islam to our neighbors. Because my own experience as an imam in, in, in North America, in Toronto is from 73, I have been interacting with the non-Muslim. Every time you explain Islam logically, in a balanced way, every time you can dispel those misunderstandings. People will be convinced that this is a balanced way. This is a rational, reasonable path to seeking God's pleasure. So use this opportunity. Open doors in the masajid. Open doors, outing programs where you can invite even non-Muslims to have a dinner because you know this tradition was hospitality. is a great tradition of Ibrahim alayhi salam inherited by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and also Muslims alhamdulillah. Arabs, no matter how much fault you find in them, they are the most hospitable people on the face of this earth. I stand here on the member, I know this. 
And of course, this is something they have carried from the Sunnah of the Prophet So use this opportunity for that. Brothers and sisters, time is short. Our standing before Allah is sooner or later. It's going to happen. There is no way running away from it. There is no way to run away from meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will ask us, how did you leave your children? How did we leave them? Are they aware of the duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have showered them with so much material comforts, we fail to teach them Islam and how to pray, how to make dua, how to purify themselves, how to do the basic duties of, of a Muslim. If you fail in doing that, and after you die, your child is not motivated to raise their hands. Ya Allah, have mercy on my parents as they had mercy on me. Then I am a failure, brother. You are a failure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Use the summer to develop that bonding with your family, with your children. Be compassionate. Be forgiving. Do more than your part. Instead of expecting your wife to do everything, do more than your share. This is the role model of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our children. May Allah ground, guide our grandchildren. May Allah guide our future generation of Muslims to remain on the straight path, to be a source of guidance for the people around them, for themselves. Allahumma hudina wa hudibina wa ja'alna sababan liman hitada. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and guide others through us to the straight path and make us instruments of guidance and mercy for the world. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li walaq. الحمد لله الذي هدانا إلى دين الإسلام وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا نبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد let us pray for our brothers and sisters. There are a number of them that I know I have their names in my mind. They are really sick. They are in their last throes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. Allahumma huvin alayhim sakaratil maut wa gamarati. Ya Allah, make it easy for them as they are experiencing the pangs of death. Allahumma ahihim mida kanatil hayatu khairan la. Wa tawaffuhum mida kanatil wafatu khairan la. Ya Allah. Let them live sound life. Let them lead sound life. If life is good for them, extend their life. If life is not good for them and death is good for them, Ya Allah, take their souls with mercy and forgive them and save them from the trials of grave and hellfire and admit them into Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma rahamma utana. Allahumma shfimar lana. Ya Allah, have mercy on those who have passed away. Ya Allah, have mercy on them. Ya Allah, have mercy on those who are sick and suffering. Allahumma rahamma utana. Allahumma shfimar lana. Ya Allah, send down healing and cure upon them. Ya Allah, let us also pray for our young people. I see many of them in front of me. Still searching for the perfect marriage partners. And this partner is not going to arrive. You have to cut down your conditions. Be realistic, brother and sister. I was not asked whom I am going to marry, but I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have my wife who I have lived with more than 52 years happily. I don't want anyone else in this life. So cut down your conditions. Be realistic. And let us encourage marriage for our children. Don't wait for that ideal partner to arrive. Ya Allah, guide our youth to find suitable partners who will be assets for them in this life, taking to the Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma hab lana bin azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata ayun wa ja'alna lil muttaqeen imama. Ya Allah, grant us comfort and joy in our spouses and children and make us role models 
for God-fearing people. Let us also pray for those who are oppressed and persecuted all over the world. Allahumma nsuril mustadha'afina fi kulli makan. Allahumma nsurum. Allahumma kullahum awnam wa nasira. Allahumma kullahum awnam wa nasira. Allahumma alayka bi'adaihim. Allahumma jalid da'irata alayhim. Allahumma jalid da'irata alayhim. Allahumma nsuruhum. Allahumma nsuruhum. Allahumma arham ummata Muhammad. Allahumma farrijan ummati Muhammad.